Ukrainian forces are making further gains in the south, pushing toward the occupied city of Kherson. That's just days after Ukraine pushed the Russian military from the strategic city of Lyman. This comes as we're learning that the U.S. is considering how to respond to a possible escalation from Russians, from the Russians, including their potential use of tactical nuclear weapons. Fried Zakaria, the host of Fried Zakaria GPS, joins me now. Good to see you. Pleasure, in yeah, person. And yeah, in person, <laughs> it's great. Listen, so Russia is um, trying to make the, the, the territorial claim, but clearly they are facing these major setbacks in the conflict. Let me roll this video because you can see, Fareed, that the Ukrainian troops driving through the newly reclaimed Lyman. How do you see Putin's sham referendum playing out on the battlefield? Well, it's looking a, a bit of a disaster right now because Lyman is strategically really important. It is a key logistical hub. So the fact that they've got it makes it much easier for the Ukrainians to keep moving in the east. Kherson is where the heart of the battle is. If they win in Kherson and they're moving forward every, every hour, they've gained 20, 30 miles, which sounds like a, a, a small amount, but it's actually a lot. It takes a lot to move 20, 30 miles. Kherson is the heart of the battle because if they start moving th through the Russian position south, it means Ukraine will live, uh, you know, will be a viable country no matter what happens afterwards because they get back the coast. They get, it becomes impossible for the Russians to take Odessa or it becomes very, very difficult. So these are, it's almost like a pincer movement. This is very, very important. This is probably... We're witnessing the turning point of the war if the Kherson advances continue. Because if the, the Ukrainians can keep moving, they're, they're essentially driving the Russians out of the most important gains they've made in 2022. There's a whole bunch of stuff they did in 2014 and 15, which is a separate issue. But of the stuff they took this year, Kherson was the, this, this area is the most important in the South. It's what blocked access to the sea. It's why the Ukra Ukrainians couldn't export their grain, export food. So if they're able to continue to do this, it's huge. And as you say, Putin says he's annexed territories, but then his spokesman says, we don't know exactly how much we've annexed, but we have to have discussions with the, the puppet rulers of those regions. But one of those puppet rulers, by the way, seems to have just been assassinated, so they'll have to find somebody else to have a conversation. So I think you'll get this question. So then where... What is going on with Putin? Where is he? Because if he doesn't, if he does not have an understanding of what's going on, right, and he is the guy at the top, right, he's the puppet master there, then does anyone really have an understanding of what's going on? You'd, you'd have to imagine what's happened here. It's a highly centralized power structure anyway. You know, in those kind of highly dictatorial, highly centralized power structures, bad news does not go up. Mm -hmm. Who's the person who wants to go to Putin and say, your idea to invade, to take Kyiv was a bad idea. Your idea to do this, your, these were all bad ideas. So that's not what, the, what he's hearing. He's hearing probably the most sugar-coated sugar version of all this. But at the end of the day, the thing about you know, war is if you're losing territory, it's very hard to, to sugarcoat that. Yeah, but, uh, so to add to the last question, so now he's, you know, he's been ratcheting up this sort of nuclear, right, this saber rattling and uh, these tactical nuclear weapons. And, and sources briefed on the most recent intelligence is telling CNN that they've been developing contingency plans, the U.S. This is, the U.S. is taking this very seriously. Oh, the U.S. has to take it very seriously. Look, Russia has 2,000 tactical nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. Putin has twice now said he will, he will defend this land with, by, you know, using every means possible. And so the Biden administration is uh, taking it very seriously, and I'm sure they're developing specific responses. Now, I haven't talked to them so I, about this specific thing because I don't want, so I don't want people to think, oh, this is some kind of an, you know, it, the, 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 I'm, I'm sort of leaking what the Biden administration is going to do. But my sense based on previous discussions with senior officials about what to do in these kinds of situations is it's most most likely the United States would not respond to a tactical nuclear strike by the Russians with a nuclear strike of its own. Um, it would not, you know, the idea is they may behave res irresponsibly. We are not going to behave irresponsibly. So then what is the response? What they would do would be a massive conventional response. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the U.S. could just give you one example. It could do an air bombardment campaign that would essentially destroy every Russian military position in Ukraine, effectively ending the war. Mm -hmm. The Ukrainian troops would then just walk into those positions. So if it decided that it was, you know, serious enough, 
The U.S. has that capacity. I don't think the Russians would be able to stop it. The U.S. has much, much you know, better air capacity. Yeah. But they wouldn't use nuclear weapons in response. Listen, we just talked about it, but I think it's important to hear that this is a former CIA director, David Petraeus, when he said when he was asked about whether how the U.S. would respond. But I, we talked about it, but let's hear it. Just to give you a hypothetical, yeah. um, we would respond by leading a NATO, a collective effort, that would take out every Russian, con Russian conventional force that we can see and identify on the battlefield in Ukraine and also in Crimea and every ship on the, in the Black Sea fleet. That's what you said. Uh, yeah. Best plan? Yeah. That's the best plan you think? I think that's a, that's a, I mean, remember, that, this would be a brutal plan. And I think it's important, we, we're probably talking about 50,000 Russian troops. Um, I think it's important to communicate to the, that to the Russians. And last week on my program, uh, Lloyd Austin, the Secretary of Defense, indicated that he had communicated to his Russian counterpart the, you know, the nature of the American response, Maybe, probably obviously not the specifics of it. So I think the Russians are aware. My, my own sense is, look, we've all gotten Putin wrong, but right now, I think Austin said this, which I think is correct. Um, he's going to try this mobilization first. It's been a very politically painful thing. It's been very unpopular in Russia. 300,000 new troops. Remember, none of them are out there yet. Right. So first, he's going to try that. He's going to see... And this is why the Ukrainians are going to have to keep pressing forward, because the Russians are going to try and take back the ground they're losing using these new troops. So the Ukrainians have to keep pushing forward. But I think they have a fundamental strategic advantage. It's their country, which mm -hmm. means, you know, when you have a conquering army come in, the conquering army has to keep lots of troops in all the cities it, take, it takes because it's holding these cities against the will of the people. Mm -hmm. When the liberating army comes in, it doesn't need to do as much of that because the people are securing the, the city for them. I mean, we saw this right. in, the, you know, in World War II when the Nazis would take uh, uh, cities. They had, to, they had to use huge numbers of troops to hold them. The Allies didn't. Does Russia have that number? It does, theoretically. I mean, it could, if it did more conscription, yeah, it's a big country, 150 million people. So, I mean, they, they have 300,000 called up now. They could call up another three. Or if they were more organized, perhaps? Well, the whole thing has been a complete, the incompetence, you know, part, partly, part of what we're seeing here is, uh, you know, Russia, as I think Kissinger said this, Russia as a military power has, its reputation has suffered a devastating blow. Remember, what was Russia's claim to, to power? Oil and guns. Um, well, what we're seeing is that the Russian military is just not that good. So, you know, I tell my friends in India, Indian military has bought for long decades all of its advanced military equipment from the Russians. I say, are you watching how this stuff is performing on the battlefield? Are you really sure you want to do this? I predict that in the next 15 years, the Indian military will start buying a lot of American and French and, and uh, British stuff and try to phase out of the Russian stuff. This has been a devastating blow to the Russians. Their, their military uh, equipment doesn't function. Their men don't want to fight. Uh, their, their soldiers don't want to fight. Um, no, it's a, it's a disaster, but that is why you, your question about the nuclear weapons is so relevant, because Putin is not going to sit still. He is going to fight back. My guess is he'll first try, try to take out Ukraine's energy and infrastructure. You know, in other words, bomb the power plants put those cities into darkness in the winter. So this may be a very tough period for, the, for those Ukrainian uh, towns and cities. Um, they're going to be without heat. They're going to be without light. Um, but they will fight. It's their country. Always a pleasure. Make us all smarter. Thank you, Especially sir. me when you sit here and talk to me. Thank you, Fareed. Pleasure. Good to see you.